Dumelang and welcome to Healing and Letting Growth with me, Abigail Ndewa Mohati. And welcome to the new month, April. Uh, I hope you have a great month, fresh start and renewed strength. And speaking about a new month, I want to introduce to you guys a new diary session. So welcome to the few pages of my diary session. And we are going to start with a rather sad story, but a fulfilling one. Speaking about a new month and a new season, uh, I was just reflecting on the first quarter of the year. And I realized that our country is going through a lot. We are going through a lot as a people. I mean, going through the pandemic and how it severely affected the economy. Hence, we had uh, the number of suicide cases increasing uh, in the recent months. And I also previously saw a, a note going around, a suicide note. And this took me back to the year 2014. So for me, 2014 was the year where I've learned that mental health is a real issue. It was the year where I experienced someone in my close circle uh, succumbing to suicide. So the main aim of this video is to share with you my first-hand experience on suicide and a few lessons that I've learned. And this is how the story goes. So I started my corporate uh, career in 2014 at a pharmaceutical company and it was a learnership for 12 months and I was so excited to start the program mainly based on how the program was presented and also you know the potential to have a great career in the pharmaceutical industry and then I met with my colleagues we were six in total four ladies and two guys and we clicked immediately because i think we were all excited about the program and we all shared the same sentiments we were also hungry to learn and grow i think we mo most of us were competitive so it was like you know we're willing to do this we're excited for this year and we're excited about this program and you know when you're young you're excited about a lot of things and the bonus was that the company was really supportive um, with the leadership we also had a life coach you know uh, encouraging us coaching us and you know that kept us afloat um, in terms of our mental health and there was this guy Kamu and he was the most charismatic you know the funniest person in the group and he was quite unique in that he was both creative and analytical or intellectual so it was like those people with a very strong left and right brains like you know he could make you laugh you know take himself less seriously be super playful and funny and yet be super intelligent and that was so that was one of his unique characters he also had the biggest heart Kamo was generous he was kind and considerate the training was quite intensive we spent the first nine months uh, working together and doing the training as a group so that meant that we spent more time together we bonded and we actually gotten used to communicating with one another and checking up on each other because we were bound to communicate in any case and uh, after the nine months we had to be independent in order to apply what you've learned in the field obviously under the supervision of your manager and you know when you're working alone that's when the loneliness creep in because remember we're used to being together all the damn time on a daily basis and now you have to be independent you're working alone and you're trying to apply everything that you've learned in the training and that's when the isolation started uh, we could not you know catch up enough uh, we could not you know check up on each other as as often as we want to and 
um, after a few weeks of being independent, our dear friend unfortunately succumbed to suicide. May his soul rest in peace. And after finding out, we were all devastated. Uh, we were shocked. We, sure, we we could not be. We just could not believe it. We, you know, you feel like it's a dream because number one, this person didn't show any signs of depression, sadness, or anything that could lead him to do uh, something like that. And number two, this person was incredibly smart creative you know and charismatic and they had so much potential and it just didn't make sense because he also looked forward to to the future we used to share so many things on how he wants a bright future and how he wants to start a family and you know such things and you get shocked when you hear that to say but we were sharing these and you feel sad that you could not pick a single thing and after that one starts to wonder to say you know if i created a safe space for him to open up to me you know maybe this couldn't have happened and you also ask yourself you know had they left their suicide notes um would this, you know, make it easier for us to accept uh, the decision that he took? Uh, maybe we would be uh, more understanding. But unfortunately, um, you know, these suicide notes, there's no closure to them. And, you know, it's like you would never understand why a person took that dis decision we continued with the journey of the learnership um, in order to complete it by the end of the year so we went went back to work in the field and uh, life continued as normal but immediately after a month um, we were done with the training and the company actually organized a graduation ceremony you know just to celebrate with us um, and you know to congratulate us with our new journeys and you know senior leaders of the organization were there uh, the training company was there it was a nice celebration honestly and i remember at some point we the trainees uh, I had to give uh, a speech, you know, like a short speech about your journey and what you're looking forward to, you know, in the celebration. And, you know, all five of us were supposed to stand up and, you know, give your speech. And as my colleagues were giving their speech and, you know, sharing how they're excited to start their new journey and how they've grown, I just got overwhelmed with emotions. Um, I remember I had almost like a, an, an emotional breakdown and I couldn't express it. Um, and maybe it's because I was so young that I could not articulate it properly. But, you know, as everybody was speaking, in my mind, I thought about him. I was like, he would have been here. He would have been excited. And as I'm reflecting, I sometimes ask myself that, you know, if this ordeal happened today, this year, could we possibly have a different outcome? Would I be able to reach out to this person earlier? You know, would I be able to create a safe space for them to open up? Uh, and most importantly, uh, would I be able to pick up that this person has signs and symptoms of, you know, uh, being really, really sad and possibly depressed? And I struggle to ask, answer those questions because there's, it's not as straightforward. Number one, uh, in this particular case, this person was super smart so it means they were able to hide what they're going through uh, and number two they are super funny and charismatic so those peasants are always making jokes to make everybody else laugh 
and do you think that they are well because they're able to make you laugh and number three this person was so considerate and accommodative of everyone around them so they were so sociable that you would assume that nah they don't have any self-esteem issues and i've also learned to discern that you know what just because someone is charismatic is loud doesn't mean that you know what they're immune to mental health conditions the same way that we can assume that people that are reserved and quiet means that they're depressed you know um so it's all about using discernment and uh hoping that you know what people are not caving in in their homes and suffering alone but to know that you know what there's always people there to help um, and whatever that you're going through you find that you're not the only one you find that uh, there's you know lots of us who are going through the same thing but maybe we're not sharing and please share in the comments below if there was a time where you felt like you know you could have reached out to someone earlier or you could have you know asked them if they are fine and you later found out that they either you know attempted suicide or committed it uh, let me know in the comments below and you know let me know if you're still regretting or if you've accepted that you know it was out of your control it also taught me that just because a person is charismatic and sociable doesn't mean that they can't feel alone and deeply isolated so it comes back to the fact that you know what these people also deserve you know good quality relationships than quantity relationships and it's up to us to look out for one another and not assume based on personalities so i can't assume that just because you're sociable you can't feel sad you can't have self-esteem issues and you know you can't be depressed this can help us as a people to understand each other better and not judge you know people based on characters and personalities uh, we can actually beat a lot of stereotypes uh, we can actually uh, learn to be open and vulnerable with each other and most importantly heal and grow together and thank you for watching the first diary session here on healing and letting growth with me abigail i'll see you in the next episode Ta -da!